Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, or if you're new here, welcome to the channel. Today, I thought we'd talk about another genre and another game that I think can easily be argued to be hugely influential into the genre as a whole. What's that genre, you ask? Well, again, we're going to go kind of niche and talk about point and click adventure games. Now, this was an early genre to the PC market and one that in many ways struggled to find a home on consoles due to how the interface itself functioned. It was also an alien concept to most arcade goers and console players who were used to more action-oriented games with some used to more turn-based RPG fare. So how would a genre like this get to them? Which game was it and what came before it? Well, if you have a moment, sit back and hang out a while as we go into a few of these things and talk about one of the games that was part of the early golden age for this type of game as a whole. Now let's start out with the most popular and influential series that came out of this genre. King's Quest. This was one of the very first graphical adventure point and click games with the first release dropping right around 1980. Keep in mind many games didn't even have graphics as far back, with games like MUDs being entirely text based and even Zork, one of the most notable adventure games, also being text based in its approach. So the idea of having a game like this being graphical was an eye opener for many a gamer. The gameplay itself was pretty simple. Use your mouse to explore the environment, picking up items and interacting with NPCs. You could use these items from your inventory on items in the environment and try to affect a result. If this sounds kind of vague, well, in all honesty, it really was. These games were all about trial and error with a heavy focus on puzzle solving to progress through the game. This was far, far cry from action games and that a lot of us were used to but fairly commonplace for PC gamers who were used to games like Colossal Cave Adventure and Zork as a source of gameplay. Though in this case, they had the added benefit of seeing where you were rather than having to read a large amount of text that described all of it to you. This was a popular series with games going all the way up to a reimagining in 2015 through 2016 and would be influential in many games to come one of which was known as The Secret of Monkey Island. Now, The Secret of Monkey Island was a game designed by the now sadly defunct LucasArts. This was an adventure game set in a fictional representation of the Caribbean where a character by the name of Guybrush Throughwood was trying to become a pirate. The concept was thought up by Ron Gilbert who brought on Tim Schafer and Dave Grossman to help him flesh out the game. This game took a different take than the King's Quest series where in those games, most of the mistakes would end up with a player just straight up dying. This team wanted to have a more humorous consequence, like Guybrush getting bounced back up by a rubber tree plant if he falls off a cliff or other such antics. Another example would be the sword fighting that would involve learning various different insults and then learning how to use those against your opponent versus learning how to straight up sword fight, with losing ended up with Guybrush rendering at sword point as opposed to being run through. They also streamlined many of the puzzles to make them feel more cohesive and more accessible to the player, which I know many of you that go back and play this game now would find that somewhat laughable, but at the time, it was definitely more approachable than other games. All of this humor and clever writing and streamlined puzzles helped make the game very popular. So popular, in fact, that it would actually make the jump to consoles, to the Sega CD, in fact, which was many console gamers first introduction to this genre as a whole. This would usher in an almost golden age of point and click adventures, with multiple sequels to Monkey Island coming out, games like Day of the Tentacle, Full Throttle, and Grim Fandango to name a few coming out, most all of these made by LucasArts themselves. This isn't even naming other companies that were doing these. All of these delighting players with devious and zany puzzles and outrageous humor that kept many of us coming back for hours and hours of gameplay. Today, you can still see many of these games on the market, even though many of them are far from AAA supported at this point. Still seeking to tell wild, off-the-wall stories and interesting tales. But what do you guys think of this one? Were any of you a fan of the Monkey Island series? Were you a fan of point-and-click adventure games at all? Which was your first, if so? Let me know in the comments. And while you're there, if you don't mind, please leave this video a like. And if you see more of my content, like the ones possibly on your screen now that you like, consider following the channel. That helps me out a lot. Till we meet again though, have a great rest of your day and happy gaming.